Warning, the last segment of this video is 18 rated, maybe even X rated. Let's get into it. Good morning, good evening, or good night, wherever in the world you are. Whatever time of day you're watching this, hope you're having a fantastic day and welcome as the party continues after Southampton lost to Nottingham Forest 1 0. And our boy right here, Mr. Bambi on Ice himself, slams home a fantastic goal. I, I can't tell you how happy I am with the league position. I can't rem stop reminding you guys that yesterday is a day you need to mark in your calendar. It is the final day Nottingham Forest would have spent in the bottom three for the rest of the season as it is onwards and upwards. And of course, yesterday was the day Scarpa was revealed to the Premier League. Can we start by wishing Scarpinia a very happy birthday. We're just so lucky to have him. We really are. Coming up in today's video is going to be, because you guys have requested it, the old school in-depth analysis on the game. I'm going to take you through the positives. I'm going to take you through some improvement sections. And as mentioned at the start of the video, the last segment is bordering on X-rated. So be prepared. Before we do all that, I just want to take a moment and be serious as yesterday I was informed that we lost one of the Forest family, Bobby, a regular commenter on this channel, a person who found um, a break, um, a little, you know, release in the videos we've been doing and we were helping him and talking with him. And Laura informed that yesterday that tragically Bobby um, has passed away. I just want to reach out to the family. I know they'll be watching and I want to pass on FFTV's deepest condolences to him to them sorry and i'm sure you guys will put down in the comments below your deep condolences and your thoughts and prayers towards bobby's family we are a family here and nothing means more to us football isn't even as important as when it comes to these topics and these moments and tragedies so bobby we love you we hope you watched down on the game yesterday and watched down on it with a smile and we wish the family all the best. All right, guys, with that said, let's jump in. Let's see if we can lift everyone's spirits and talk about the game. Um, so let's jump into the full screen analysis of this. We're going to run through the game play by play from basically start to finish in terms of the sequence that happens. And it actually quite works out quite nicely because we did start a little sloppy. And I'm going to show you in this example what I mean by that. There's a couple of things I want to point out that Forrest need to work on defensively, even though overall, look, the overarching um, thing for me, I think the defense outplayed the attack, if that makes sense. I thought the defense was quite solid throughout the whole match. Granted, Southampton didn't exactly offer much up front, but they did get off to a bit of a quick start. And um, this was slightly concerning to see um, off the bat. And what you found happened here was, if you look at the defensive shape, if you look here, Bolly tends to pull out to this left-hand channel quite a lot. And the reason he's doing it is obviously covering Lodi on his overlapping runs. However, it does then create this vacuum um, between where they should be because you can see Worrell's here as well. It forces Yates back into this position and then obviously Aurier coming back in this position. So you can see if you look at this, this, um, the size of the pitch, there's roughly the middle of it. We've got our two centre-backs playing, in essence, as a left-back and a left centre-back. And then you have Yates dropping in here to cover the hole. So they are okay. The problem is when the ball comes in over the top and they are slightly high, both these two, Bolly and Worrell, are still lacking in pace. They're brilliant aerially. Uh, but this ball over the top creates that space and allows anyone with a bit of pace about them to get in behind. And that's what we saw very early on in the game. You can see Lodi here as well, tracking back after being forward. So the ball comes in on the top. It does create a little bit of panic. As you can see, Bolly here is slightly out of position. He's out of um, the defending aspect of this attack for Southampton. And you've got Worrell trying to play catch up. And you've got, I'm pretty sure it's Che Adams here, the crapper, um, in a good bit of space. I would expect a better striker or someone with more confidence to maybe have taken it on a couple of yards here and then uh, just nailed it into the far corner. 
Obviously, he's crap and wasn't able to do that. But you're going to see that he hits it quite early. Worrell trying to get back as quickly as he can, having been beaten and out of position for it. Che does go across um, the goal there, but it's a really poor shot. And uh, it ends up with Hendo. What I like about Hendo is even though it's a dangerous situation, he knows where his posts were. He didn't even attempt to save it. In the actual video, you can see him pulling his arms out of the way. And um, it just shows very clearly he knows where his posts are and he's got his angles spot on. So for me, that still needed a bit of work. It got really, it got a lot better very quickly um, in the game. But it's still a concern. This whole body pulling out too far to the left, which forces Worrell to come across the line. Um, what I'd prefer to see is the CDM being the person who covers Luddy as he goes on the overlapping runs. That still leaves the two centre backs in the correct position on the back line. Um, and then the same, obviously, on the other side with Aurier. Where do you expect the CDM? In this case, it's Freuler. I mean, it shouldn't be, but that's a whole other debate. Um, who would step in, cover that pocket, and then that allows the consistency of the line to remain. So that's what it looked like in terms of defense. Apart from that, to be honest, we held quite strong. So it's really good to see. But it's always good to point these things out so we can learn. Well, we can understand by showing you guys. And maybe, you know, maybe someone does watch it for us. They're, they're aware of it because obviously Cooper mentioned it in his post-match interview. And I think this is what he's alluding to uh, when he was talking about it. Okay, so let's move um, the game forward and go to an attacking situation that Forrest found themselves in. This was the um, chance that Jono missed, hit the crossbar. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet or not. But I'll talk about the build-up and how the players are starting to gel and understand where each other are, especially when it comes to Morgan Gibbs-White. The ball here has just come from um, Awoni. Awoni's played it into Jono there. Uh, whoops, let me just press that there. He's played it into Jono there, but it's a bit of a bubbly ball. Uh, the good thing about this is Morgan Gibbs-White is aware of the players around him. There's a Southampton player coming towards him and his football IQ is really high. And what does he do? He lets it go through his feet because he knows Yates is there in a freer and better position. If you look at the space around Yates here, there's plenty in front of him to work with. Now, this is where Yates needs to start improving. His uh, passion, his performances, his desire to win the ball is all spot on. 10 out of 10s on everything like that. What he needs to get better at is his work in and around the edge of the opponent's box. He needs to become more spatially aware of who's around him. You can see just behind my head here if I move. Johnson's about to work himself into a massively free area of space. But Yates the, gets a little excited, I think, and decides he's going to shoot from there. So let's run this forward. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move the camera because I'm just going to block Yates for a second. I just want you guys to see what happens space-wise. So here, just behind the chair, Yates goes for the shot. Now, what will happen is John is there calling for the ball, screaming for the ball, because he's in plenty of space here. That defender is ball watching. That defender is ball watching. He's, he's completely forgotten about Johnson. This is similar to some of the defending we've talked about um, in previous matches earlier in the season that Forrest were doing. So for me, Yates, he really, if he was aware, could have fed the ball into Jono there anyway. However, oh my God, I've just realized I'm a bit of a floating body. Let's bring that down. However, the shot he does is quite poor, but in a way it helps us because it puts the ball into Jono's feet. It's not the cleanest of shots slash passes, whatever you want to see it as. And Jono's able to control it quite well. What he does, he does the hard work. He gets himself into the perfect position, the perfect body shape, and then puts himself into this angle. The problem I've got with Jono shooting right now, it's very, very predictable. He's always going to go across goal into this side. It's his favorite shot. It's the one he always goes for. What's going to happen with this, however, is that you're always going to get those defenders coming back and doing the emergency slide in. If you look to the keeper's right, it's a bit skewed by the angle here. Sorry, if you look to Jono's right and the keeper's left, there is plenty of space here for him to either just do a low curler into the bottom or he could raise it into the top corner here to make it quite hard for the keeper. That also eliminates the defenders coming in and sliding just in case they'd get a touch or a deflection onto it. But it is too predictable. And you can tell that the keepers have done their due diligence because he is leaving the space open near post for Jono to shoot and he's covering the far post. 
which isn't really, the keeper's not in the correct position here um, to save the ball. And if we run this play forward, if you look at it from this angle, I just wanted to show it to you so you can see there is the space there for him just to bring it around the keeper. I know it doesn't look as obvious from this angle, but it is. I'm just giving you the overhead here. It's actually quite narrow to go that way with the defenders coming into slide, but it's a bit deceiving with that because if you look here, the defenders are a bit higher up. They look very close on there. So just trust me with what I'm saying here. He could have gone near post, but his natural instinct is that far post. Anyway, we run it on and Jono ends up hitting the bar. He's lifted it. It's not the worst effort, but from there, he's got to be scoring. He's got to be scoring. He was going too much for placement, too much for height. Should have just put it near side for me with the keeper. And he ends up hitting the bar. But the build-up play was fantastic. And that's really what I wanted to show you guys in that one. But Jono just needs to sharpen up. It will come with time. It will come with time. As more Premier League experience gets under his belt, the better he gets. As I said loads of times yesterday on the stream, let's not rush him. Let him develop. He's accelerated his development last year. Remember two seasons ago, he was away with Lincoln, I think it was. Last year, he was our star man. He was, you know, a huge reason of why we got promoted. But let's not just jump the gun with him and let him develop at his pace. Maybe he needs some time out of the team. I don't know what you guys think. I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments below. But I don't see that as a bad thing for a young guy who's learning his trade at the highest level, elite level of football. Let's move forward. All right, so let's move on and talk about the actual goal, how that came about and what was brilliant about it and why did it work? Firstly, um, the ball was a poor pass played in and John has been able to intercept it. His pace is electric. His pace is lightning, as we just talked about. Once he gets up to speed and gets that, you know, experience in the Premier League, he's going to be a player. He's He's gone here. He's got the um, defender flat-footed. He's facing the wrong way, as you can see here. So as I pull my sleeves down, this is you only back one person in this kind of scenario. And you can see here he breaks clear. Now, what I want you to do is just watch Awoni, and we'll touch on it in the next clip. I just want to explain something. Just remember this in your mind here. Look at Awoni. As soon as Jono's anywhere near the ball, he's on his bike and he's ready to go. Just remember that for later on. We run this forward and you can see it's a two on one situation. Jono just needs to get his head down and go. He's gone. He's not going to get caught. He's too quick. Instead, what he does, he cuts out to the right to start to open that angle up that I've been talking about. For him, his favorite shot is a cross goal, like a million percent. That's his comfort zone. Even in this situation, you can see he's ahead of the defender. If he straightens up and goes, only the keeper can come out to slow him down. And what he does here, he's taken it wide and he's made the angle a bit narrow. So now he's getting to that stage where it's going to be between that shot and a cross that he's got to make the decision on. He got it wrong at Chelsea because he didn't look up. However, in yesterday's match, he's learned. He's learned from what he did at Chelsea. Obviously, Cooper got asked after the game, was it good to see Jono in almost the identical situation? He said he didn't see it as an identical situation because of Thiago. I completely disagree. The scenario was almost to the, to the blade of grass similar. So I get what Cooper's saying. He's obviously defending Jono. But here, I just want to be as objective as possible on him. Let's run it forward. And that's the difference. This frame right here where you can see if you look at Jono's head, he's assessing where the goal is, where the keeper is, and he has a look across to see what's going on in the box. A Awoni head down, gut busting, getting himself into the box. Even now, if Jono plays the ball anywhere in that channel, it's a goal. It's guaranteed. It's it's just such a lovely counter-attack. This is the thing we're starting to see happen, and this is going to be something that will help Forrest throughout the season. When those defensive lines get pushed high and Jono can get in behind and Awoni's there willing to make the run. And this is why I'm so hell-bent on Awoni playing in this middle channel here. Not on this left-hand side out here. It's not for his position. I know he's been playing well there, but we need goals. And he's most effective when he only needs one or two touches where he's running onto the ball as we're seeing in this scenario here. And this is perfect, perfect play for Awoni's strengths. 
So running forward and you can see I've got a close up here of Jono with his head up, looking across and seeing where everything is. And then the ball he plays, to be honest, is inch perfect. He's because of the pace, the window and the margin for error of the time he has to play the ball is big. He could have played it earlier where I showed you in that scenario. He could have probably taken another couple of touches. It doesn't matter, especially when Awoni himself is pretty nippy and pretty quick as well. The only thing is, I still think he should have run a bit straighter and created himself a chance and then maybe had Awoni there as backup if the keeper rushed out. He just has this tendency, as Maddie Gascoigne subscribes to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe if you guys are new here as well. Thank you, Maddie. You've made the video. Um, but yeah, this is the tendency he has. His natural tendency is to drift out wide and it keeps narrowing angles down. But having said that, it's absolutely fine. Because Awoni's in place and Awoni gets that touch. The old magic shin comes out. I think it was a shin at least. Let me know in the comments below. Was it a clean connection or not? He roofs it into the net. Forest go 1-0 up. And thank you very much. That's game set a match 27 minutes in, I think it was. But let's move on and keep on talking about some more interesting things. Okay, so let's pick it up in the second half. And this is why I like Awoni in the middle. I know, I know a lot of you in the comments are going to say, yeah, he wasn't really playing left wing. He was floating. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. But his most productive work is in the middle. Now, what's the difference between what Awoni does and say Jono, for example, does in and around the time we don't have the ball? For me, he's one of the only few. I'd guess Morgan Gibbs-White, unless he's under instruction as well, will do it as well. But he's one who will press naturally. And the way he puts pressures on defender with his physicality, his size, is something that Cooper really needs to encourage in his play. We can't have any of this drop back, non-pressing football. Not when we've got him in the team. And watch what he does here. The defender's there in control. Now, there's a couple of things I want to point out. He's coming in to close him off. I want Jono here to not be ball watching. You'll see as we play out this... Um, the sequence that Jono doesn't move. What Jono needs to do here is move across to the defender here, covering that pass and that option. Uh, Southampton player can't get it across here. His only other option would be the long ball back to the keeper there. But Jono needs to react and he is ball watching this one a bit. So as Awoni goes across him, you can see he does it perfectly. What he does, he gets his body in between himself and the man that dislodges the ball away from him. It's completely clean. But you can see Jono here is still focused on this rather than had he been in about this position here or in front of the defender here. As soon as he sees that Awoni has got the ball, he could then make his move, start to make his run in towards the channel, etc. To give Awoni that second option, especially with, I don't know who that is, I think it's MG Dub um, standing in behind. There's cover in that area anyway. He doesn't do that. And when you run it forward and Awoni does dislodge the ball and get through, Jono here is still looking at the ball and hasn't quite reacted into that channel space. But the work Awoni's doing here to get the ball is just immense. And we need to see more of that as we progress throughout the season. Run it forward. Again, Jono's still there, more concerned about potentially a foul. I would much rather have seen him using his pace and bolting down there. But the determination from Awoni, and this is the change I want to focus on more so than, I'm not saying anything negative about Jono. Again, it's just um, learning points for him. This is where Awoni has more experience. This is where Awoni's got more determination, especially since coming back from the World Cup break. You've seen a lot of this in his game. He looks fitter. He looks sharper. His touches still aren't great, but he's playing and using his strengths. This is what I like. Work on his strengths, use his strengths, utilize them, and make sure they're the predominant asset that we're seeing in the game. He gets to the ball. But he's also got decent spatial awareness, awareness, God, that went lispy, um, of the players around him. What you're going to find is he understands that as soon as he gets the ball, he's not going to have time to do anything with it. He takes a first time shot. Look, it is a bit woeful, but it goes blazing over the bar. But it shows he's got an understanding of the game and he shows he's understanding the progression. You can see here in the top corner, Giano's just slightly off the screen. So he wasn't really keeping up. Um, with the pace of that attack, potentially had he been somewhere in and around the line here, Awoni could have fed a ball in. You know, it's all hindsight. Obviously, it's a lot easier to say that now when we sit here in our comfy chairs and they're the ones doing the hard work and earning those three points for us. 
but this is this is the purpose of this video it's just to analyze it and give you guys a better understanding of the play but it was good to see that press the whole point of that sequence is to show you the press from Awoni and why the press is so important in the Premier League if you press defenders make mistakes as we just saw there as we saw happening in Chelsea in the second half and it creates opportunities you create opportunities, you're more likely to score. I know it sounds simplified. I know it's not that simple. But when you break football down to the basics, there are these certain rules that if it are adhered to, create opportunities. And pressing is 100% one of them. Let's move forward. Let's move forward and let's get into the X-rated section of this video. We're going to talk about Scarpa. I'm going to warm you up slowly with these um, with these clips, just slowly, because if I give it to you all in one go, I'm going to lose a lot of the blokes um, very quickly, if you know what I mean. So we're going to talk about a couple of things. This player is incredible. This player is unbelievable. We saw, what, 15, 20 minutes of him. And I'm, I'm convinced. I'm completely convinced in his ability. There's going to be certain things I show you in this next five or so minutes that are going to absolutely blow your mind and are going to overexcite you, over arouse you. So you have been warned. Okay. Firstly, he presses. He presses fantastically. He's, um, look at this one. Just a quick little sequence here. Um, this is near the throwing line down the side so that he knows the defender's got nowhere to go. He presses him. He's in all kinds of trouble here. Scarpa gets the block in and the ball deflects. I think that's to Colback just behind me. It, it, it's just like brilliant. You want to see that. Someone coming in already showing enthusiasm. There is no great footballer or good footballer who can be lazy. They can appear lazy in certain instances, but the majority of those great footballers that you remember will always have some kind of pressing ability to them because they work hard on the pitch. Scarpa is a hard worker as well as ability. And when I show you what he does, I can't wait to get into this. So pressing, box ticked, shooting. This is something that I personally think Forrest have been lacking very heavily. And again, let's just move the camera slightly so you guys can see. I just want you to understand the space that he creates for himself. There's a certain class of player that always makes space and they always seem like they've got time on the ball and already he is one of those. This, this for me, is probably about three or four yards of space, yeah? But for a player of his quality, having two yards of space, if you're the opponent team, you're giving him too much. Um, and you know, good luck to you. <laughs> good luck to you is all I can say. And that's exactly what Southampton did here. He fires off a rocket. They get lucky and it gets blocked. But what we are now seeing, and, and I know my camera's moving all over the place. I'm just trying to make it easier for you to see what I'm pointing out. What we're seeing is finally a player who's not afraid to shoot anywhere in and around this area expect to see shots fired off left, right and front center from Scarpinia as we move forward. So pressing ticked, long range shooting ticked. Now, has he got the football brain? Let me show you this. Okay, so I'm really having to zoom in here to get you guys to see exactly what I'm talking about. And this for me, this for me is what, what makes the difference between an average player, a good player and a potentially great player. And I'm close to putting him into that great player uh, already because of his football brain, because of his spatial awareness, because of the confidence he has. There are not many players that do what he's about to do in this sequence. And it sounds simple, but when you really think about it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Now, I've paused it here. The ball is being played into him. The ball is literally coming at him right now. Is he looking at the ball? No. Why? Because he's looking um, down the left-hand side as we're attacking. He's figuring out all in milliseconds, and I mean milliseconds, he's figuring out where the defenders are, where our attackers are, and who's coming into space in the blink of the eye. That's something that you can't fully teach. That comes from just natural football instincts. And for me, wow, what a plus it is that he's got that. So he's looking away as the ball's coming in, which tells you straight away that you know he's a confident player because as the ball comes in, it's quite bouncy into him. He just chests it down. Now, if you look just behind me, oh, why is everything behind me today? It's uh, so frustrating. If you look just over here, there in that little space under my armpit, that's Lodi coming in on the overlap. And that's Lodi running in on the overlap. 
And why is he doing that? Because there is that trust and that respect towards a player of Scarpa's ability where you know he's going to grab the ball and he's going to find you with a pass. So if we run this forward a couple of frames, there comes the pass, right? I've got to move the camera again. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I I'm getting overexcited myself. I feel the room temperature heating up. Uh, you know, we're talking Scarpa now. The pass... Always what you will find with Scarpa's passes are they are in front of the player. Exactly how, you know, I teach the kids at under 12 levels, but how everyone is taught when you play football, play it into the path, into them in front. Now, Lottie's going to grab this ball and I'm definitely going to have to move my camera again because it's going to move into that sequence. And there he goes. But we're just going to watch Scarpa's play here. The ball from Scarpa is fantastic. Now he's going to start to make a run here, but he's going to be tracked by the Southampton player. And this, again, is the stuff that we're not seeing. That And to be fair to the rest of the Forest players, you don't see this in many players, is that understanding of space. Let me run this forward and watch this. He tracks him and he sees that the Southampton player is tracking him. So what does he do? Does he try to make that run into there? No, he understands there's another Southampton player waiting for him there. Instead, he gives the impression that he's going he lets the Southampton player go and he stops his run. Now what's he done? He's created a bit of space, disconnect between him and the player. But there's another Southampton player there. So he goes a step further and pulls himself away, as you can see him here, just off screen. Now what's happened is this player has completely lost Scarpa. He's going to come towards Lodi and it's going to create that nice channel for him to dictate the play. And that, for me, all comes from his football awareness that had he continued the run, there was uh, potentially the defender here. This guy would have carried on tracking him. This guy was coming across to block the channel. And just by being smart enough to understand that going backwards sometimes is the best way forward, he's going to create this pocket of space for himself as we run it forward here. And now look at it. He's got this lovely channel to work with, lovely green grass around him. And Lodi and him have obviously got that connect. They know each other. They have good mates, clearly, from what we're seeing on social media. It's just fantastic to see. Ball comes into him. And again, look at this. The ball is in flight. It's on its way to him. Look at his head position. Is he looking at the ball? No. What's he looking at? He's looking to see where this defender is, where this defender is, to understand the shape of the game. This is stuff. Look, you all know Zidane's my all-time favorite footballer, yeah? For reasons like this, as a midfielder myself back in the day, I ain't no Zidane, I ain't no Scarpa. But this is the kind of thing midfielders can understand and respect when they see it. As look, you don't look away from the ball unless you're confident enough in your own ability that you know where it's coming and you can almost control it blind. But to look around and see that... And by the way, it looks like we're playing in the damn Brazil kit. I mean, it's freaking fantastic. We've got Lodi just behind me here in the Brazil kit, and we got Scarpa. It's like watching Brazil at this time. It really is. Anyway, he's looking away. He's understanding where the play is. And then what you'll see here is, I'm going to have to move my camera. I don't know where I'm going to put it. These guys are just baffling me. Lodi, Lodi on the run, head down, on his way down. Why? Because he has full faith and he knows that if there's space, Scarpa's going to find it. Is there space? Absolutely. What's created the space? The fact that originally Scarpa did that drop in um, into that position there. And then Lodi distracted um, the chap here. And now he's got the space to thread this ball through this channel with acres of room for Lodi to go in. Now the ball still has to be hit correct at the right pace and everything. Can Scarpa do it? Of course he can. And, and look at the space. There's no one challenging him. He's got all this, all this room around him. Why? Because players of his ability have this. I don't know how they do it, but they have this ability to create time and space for them. Are you getting excited yet? Let's keep going. Here comes the ball. Hit inch perfect into the channel. Thank you very much. What a ball. Problem was, there was no one anticipating the cross in the middle. But the play is, is just sublime. It's sublime from Scarpa. Let's keep going, man. There's, there's, so much, there's so much to go through. I told you. Bring your tissues. Now, that was up the pitch. Let me show you what happens in our own half. And I think I'm just going to move the camera yet again. I mean, I can't keep up with Scarpa's moving. Sorry, guys, but I'll move the camera as best I can. 
Now, the ball's going to come into him. The ball's already on its way into him. You can see it just behind uh, my head here. There's the ball. Again, look where he's looking. He's looking over here to assess the situation on the pitch and understand what's going on. It's unbelievable. The ball's in flight, in motion. If we look up here, you got Serge Aurier. He's seen, oh, bloody hell, Scarpini is about to get the ball. That gives me the license to go forward. And let's just run it through slightly. Let me just move that so you can see it a little better. And here we go. He's got the ball. Instant Scarpa touching the ball. Green light. Surge, go. Surge is gone. But does he play it now? No, he doesn't. He waits for the right time. He's buying the time for Surge to get in front of his man and into the space. And he's still got that space. That thing I'm telling you about that only a certain level of player can create. Scarpinia is that player. He's got space. Now, granted, Southampton are crap. I know. Trust me, if you can create it against Southampton, you can create it against other teams. This is going to be huge for us. He waits for the ball and then there she is. Once he's got Aurier in the clear, he plays the ball. Where does the ball go? Look at that beautifully in front of him. So uh, just think about what's happened here. If it's a poor pass, um, Aurier has to check his run. If it's too far in front, he's not going to get it. If it's exactly in the G spot, so to speak, right here. He's going to run onto it without breaking stride and the attack can continue. The passing is perfect. The awareness is perfect. The vision is perfect. Everything about him so far is screaming perfection. And what a ball that was. All right, I promise you this, this will be the last Scarpinia bit. You know, if you're going to go, this is going to kind of blow you. So, and as Dino, Sai, whoever else is watching... I warned you. I warned you. Here we go. Scarpinia again on the ball, just into their own half. He's looking around. He's looking around. He doesn't need to worry about where the ball is. But now he comes under pressure. He's already looked up. And look at this under pressure with the Southampton defender literally on his legs. He produces the ball of the match for me. He's going to whip one across field all the way into this gap into Nico Williams is at least a 25 yarder but it's the curl it's again the direction of the ball and it's again the accuracy where look there's one thing to have the vision of the pass there's another thing to deliver it and there's a third thing of making sure you're not breaking that player's running stride or anything like that it's it's unreal it's unreal how good this player is and that pass that was it for me. I was like, oof. oof. Look how far back he's played that pass from. Look how far. I, I mean, I don't need to talk. Just just admire it. Just admire it, really. The way it's flown through the air. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Scarp is the man. This is why. This is why I was so, so disappointed that he didn't start the game yesterday. And there you go. He's celebrating there with Yatesy already, which is fantastic to see. But this is why I was so disappointed yesterday that he didn't start. There's a lot of crap on Twitter about break him in gently. There's been a lot of crap from some commentators, from some ex-footballers um, saying break him in gently. He needs to get to know the pace of the Premier League. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's fine if you're talking about an average player maybe coming from you know, an average league who has an average reputation. We're not talking about that with Scarpa. We are talking about the best player in Brazil. Full stop. You can't argue with me. He's got the awards to prove it. You're talking about one of the best attitudes on a football pitch and someone who's probably the sharpest player in the squad right now because he's had a whole season already completed under his belt. My concern would be more towards the end of the season rather than the start of the season. And has he played too much football? Use him while he's hot. Use him while he's performing like that. It's unreal how good he is. And and just unleash him. But I don't want him playing at Blackpool. I don't want him wasted. What if he got injured? Save him. Don't want to see him at Wolves. Save him for Leicester. That's my um say. I hope you've enjoyed that assessment. It's it is a pleasure to make because there's so many positives to take out of the match. Let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with. No doubt I've got most of that wrong according to some people, but it's always good to do a little analysis and it's always more pleasurable when it's off the back of a win as well. Coming up tonight, we've got the Grumpy Old Reds live 
where it will be party mode back on. So make sure you're tuned in for that tonight. And of course, if you could go and follow us on Twitter, both on the High Press and of course on the official FFTV channel, all the links you need are in the description and they're there for you there with link the link tree um, slash for, Forest Fan TV. Thank you so much for watching. Before you uh, make your way out of the viewing room, wherever it is you're watching it, please do hit the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to become a member, and thank you to all those members. We had a crazy amount last night. Um, if you want to do it, hit the join button. It's only 99p on a silver membership. We'll see you tonight for the grumpy old reds. Come on, you reds.